Time for the lowdown with Lorenzo Alexander, Buffalo Bills linebacker Lorenzo Alexander in studio with us for his lowdown, his view of what's going to happen in Sunday's game. The lowdown brought to you by Hutch's Redefining City Dining. Welcome, Lorenzo. Good to see you. Hey, how you guys been? Good. Good all right. How's your bye week? It was great. Was out in Arizona for the week. Uh, got some time to hang out with the kids, enjoy some warm weather, and uh, chill in the pool a little bit. How warm was it? About 90, 85, 90 degrees, dry heat for Arizona. So it felt like, you know, if you've ever been to San Diego, that's what it felt like. Mm. All right, though. I mean, you, the heat doesn't bother you out there? It wasn't hot. You don't San feel Diego, it. Better. San Diego weather. Yeah, <laughs> 95, you don't feel not it. 85, 90 There's in no Arizona humidity. is not hot. It's not okay. hot at all. And what are the you kids You enjoyed it. The kids good with that? They love it. Yeah. Yeah. And they like it here, too, though. They like the chill it, in the air here um, as well. Yeah, I mean, they like the seasons. They like their friends. They like wherever they're at. I mean, they got friends all over the place. So, yeah, they're easy. Yeah. Easy going. Yeah. What did you do? Just chill? I mean, you had a, we were talking about before you came on there, you had a pretty heavy workload of plays in the right. Tennessee game a couple of Sundays ago. Yeah, just relaxed. I mean, I still did some recovery stuff, got some physical therapy out in Arizona, um, probably a couple of workouts, got on my Peloton. So you want to continue to move. I mean, the worst thing you can do when you have an off week is kind of just sit and be stagnant, and then you come back and you're a little bit more sore than, than usual. So with respect to the game this week, I want to just jump right into this right. because, you know, you look at this Miami team and – they're having their share of issues. There's, you know, I'm, I don't know. You guys probably don't read as much as we do as right. we get ready for the game, but some consternation down there amongst the players. I just, I just wonder from a player perspective, if you're on a team like that and you see pieces getting jettisoned off the roster, right. good quality talent mm -hmm. that you know is being stripped from the team you're playing for, how do you wrestle with that and still be a professional about something like that? That's just you mean if you're in that locker if you're room. You're in that locker room and you see these pieces yeah. getting sent here, I mean, there, and everywhere. That's definitely hard. I mean, I've been on some some teams that were bad, but I don't know if I've ever been in a situation where you're pretty much punting on the season and and every and it feels like you know nothing can be right. And, I, and you know, I played in Washington, and so we always had some type of drama. Um, <laughs> at, the, at the end of the There's day, more now. <laughs> right? At the end of the day, you ha you have to focus on things that you can control um, because you are always getting constantly evaluated, regardless yeah. of whatever the circumstances, how bad it is. Um, so you, you're trying to prepare because you still have. 31 other teams that are watching you, how you play on game day. Are you taking it off because everything around you is chaotic, so now yeah. you're not going to play hard? Um, um, you know, and this game is so hard to play. In for, so for a player, I'm still, I still want to go out there and perform well right. and represent who I am and my family and all those things and still play for my brothers that are on that team, regardless of what may be going on in the front office or what coaches and, and the culture change that may be happening around me. Yeah, I think, and I, I believe this, it's impossible to tank successfully in the NFL. And even if you're going to get a better draft pick on what, now they have, uh, what, uh, five first-round picks over the next couple of years in right. the Dolphins? Yes. But so what? I mean, you've, you've already changed the culture of your locker room when you deliberately, at the top level on down, you deliberately try not to win, right? You've already altered what people believe in that locker room. Yeah, and it's... And it's... <sighs> It's a, it's a very difficult situation because I, 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 you know that front offices are thinking about the future. And if they figure that they may not be able to win immediately, there, it, there has to be some type of transition period. And it even happened here. It never got bad culturally to where you see guys want to get out of town. But we were trading away pieces and yep. that you thought were very talented and didn't sign guys back that you thought was going to be good in this league, but they didn't fit with, with the, the future or the mindset of what Sean and Brandon had envisioned for this team. But I think we did a great job of that transition. I think Sean never made it feel like we were trying to punt the games away, but even though they may, it, 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 but it's just hard because there has to be a transition, but you still know you got to honor guys that are in that locker room because they want to play and want to win. And, and I, you know, it's a very delicate balance. And I think Sean did probably a, a great job of making that transition. And, and it's been successful. We were able to get through that time. And now right. we have a pretty solid team that has a bright future. And that proved to be a difficult balance for Coach Flores because he said the quarterback situation was settled last week. Right. When it said Rosen's going to be playing the last 12 games of the season. And it's less than a week later. And he does a 180. And, and now Fitz is starting this week. So... What do, and I'm not going to ask you because you're yeah. not down there. But what does how does Fitz change the dynamic for you guys? Just right. being the veteran who you know is going to get the ball out and, yeah, and I think, defenses. And I think that's the biggest thing. I mean, you, Fitz has played a, a a ton of ball and has been good throughout his career. I mean, I think his his biggest thing that you can probably criticize is the amount of turnovers he's had, and that's yeah. 
just the way he plays. He's fearless. He's going to go out there and try to make plays. He's not going to play tight. Um, he's going to play loose and try to win games. And if you turn a, a ball over in that, uh, he trusts his defense or his team to maybe help him out and get him out of those type of situations. But he's been great. He gets the ball out of his hands. Um, he has the ability to, to make plays with his feet. And, you know, like I said earlier, he has like this it factor, this dust that he – rolls out, stumbles, gets up, and finds somebody down deep and makes this magical play. And I think guys really rally around him. He has like a galvanizing sense. And I never played with him, but talking to guys, their team seems to compete better when he's, yeah. when he's in games. And he's, even when he's in Tampa, when he was here. Now, obviously, with Miami, with the way they was able to come back last week last versus week, Washington. Yeah. And so, um, from my point of view, when, when um, Miami decides to start Fitz, they have the intent of we, we want to win this game. It's not let's see what we have in our quarterback, our young quarterback. Let's try to develop and get through this game. It's like we want to win. Lorenzo Alexander is with us for the lowdown on this Friday. I mentioned that Chris here, Lorenzo, earlier that, um, and you've been here throughout Sean McDermott's tenure. I can't recall a game where Coach McDermott did, had a team that uh, overlooked an opponent or took, took them lightly in, in, the, no. in the two plus years he's been here. I haven't seen that at all, right? You know, not at all. And I think Sean probably has done the best job I've ever seen from a coach to, to really address it. Because oftentimes I think coaches assume you shouldn't take anybody for uh, ignore, like, ignore them or, yeah. and, and don't really address the issue. And then you come out and you're flat. It's like, oh, I should have said something. Yeah. And so I think uh, Sean has done a good job just setting that tone early in the week. What did he say? Um, just really challenging everybody for a man not to really look at – Miami's record or what you might not see on film necessarily, but just focus on us because there's a ton of things, especially coming off a of bye, that we can improve on as a football team. And if we go and take care of our business and go on to play our football, our style of football, and not worry about who we're playing, that we should be able to go out and, and compete for a W. And that's what it's all about. Murph and I were talking before you came on about the multiple guys that are being cycled through at the nickel position. Yeah. Um, based on personnel grouping that you guys are facing and such. And I don't want to get into the X's and O's about it. What I want to get into about it with you is, are, is that a sign that NFL defenses are maybe moving in the direction that we see offenses operate under every given week with yeah. these different personnel groupings where it gets so specific yeah. that you might see if a team's deep enough, like your defense is, right. that there might be specialized guys for specialized roles. Is it getting more specialized on defense? Yeah, I mean, I, you're always trying to use your roster, and if you have guys that can play um, that are not starters, you want to get them in the game to make them feel a part of uh, the team and the defense and, and where we're going and, and, and past special teams. Because a lot of those guys play special teams as right. well. And they earn the right to play. I think that was kind of birthed out of Taron Johnson going down yes. and not being available. But it's worked well. And it has worked well. And those guys have shown um, the ability to come out and compete and play at a high level. We're talking about Saran Neal, D. Marlowe, Kevin Johnson, and have kind of uh, manned that position by committee. Um, but as obviously Taron comes back, those guys I have to either change their roles a little bit, you know, play more teams, but you still want to keep them involved because they've proven that they can play and have shown up and showed out. And so you never want to, just because a guy comes back, well, right. you got to go back and not play at all. You still want to try to use their skill sets, which I'm pretty sure we'll do over the course of the season. I'm just wondering if there's like this wave of new thinking or is yeah. that just by circumstance yeah, I more think than anything circumstance else? circumstance kind of birthed it. Okay. But, and then once those guys can show and they're proven – then, as a as a defensive coordinator, you're thinking, oh man, I can use these guys in different packages, or maybe in a given week, week against a given team. Or maybe we'll come out with you know six DBs on the field this week and show a different package. You know, yeah. and, and I think that can mm -hmm. kind of come as you as you trust guys and they show that they can play, that you want to try to utilize their talents, given you know whatever the matchup may be that week or you know down the road. You always have something in your back pocket that you can kind of pull okay. out. Talking with Bill's linebacker Lorenzo Alexander yesterday, Lorenzo on the show right here we had. Uh, Olympic uh, wrestler Jordan Burroughs, gold medal winner, and he <laughs> yeah. came out and talked to you right after that. What did he say to you guys? Um, his, his whole thing was was talking about um, complacency, and the only time where he ever felt that he wasn't at his best or he lost a match that he know he should have won is when he was being complacent. And so it goes to speaking to that thing again. Sean was very intentional this week and making sure that guys' minds were locked in. <laughs> And you bring out a guy that is at the, the, you know, the top of his field, you know, obviously a, an Olympian, a gold medalist, and he's speaking to you and talking to you very real. He was a great speaker yesterday. Like, man, yeah, you're right. So it just adds to that, to that um, mindset or that point that Sean was trying to make that 
we cannot take the Miami Dolphins lightly. This is a professional football team. By the way, has been in every game at halftime. They just haven't been able to finish games for, you know, whatever the reason, lack of uh, execution, turnovers, or, or whatever it may have been. But if you allow them to come in here and, and, and get some, some confidence early, this team can beat you. Um, and that was pretty much the, you know, the, the, the foundation of what he was talking about yesterday. And then I know before the game comes on Sunday, you've got a busy weekend because you've uh, got your tournament coming up. Is that right? Yeah, well, you know, just having the privilege of being able to host a, a cornhole um, tournament or fundraiser really in the field house here tomorrow. Yeah. Um, and it, it's really just in connection with the Crucial Catch Awareness Month. The NFL hosts every year to bring awareness to various forms of cancer. Um, this one um, on my tournament tomorrow is going to be benefiting ovarian cancer. I have a relationship with... Two Bills Mafia sisters, Mary, who's actually, um, who has ovarian cancer, and her sister, Patty, but they're great. They support the Bills. They supported me on and off the field. Um, and so this is really in their honor um, in conjunction with another relationship I have with Colleen's Dream, and that's a a, um, a foundation that's based out in, in um, Arizona that I have a connection to as well that raises money uh, for ovarian cancer. So tomorrow we're going to be doing this all together in partnership you can still sign up. Uh, you can come out tomorrow as well and, and uh, donate ten dollars if you want to just come out and hang out, watch, hear music, watch people play, bid on some of the side things. Um, but it's just a great way to give back to Western New York um, families that have supported me and that are battling ovarian cancer. Um, something that doesn't get talked about a lot, but it's definitely a a uh, horrendous uh, deal to kind of go through. It's, how's your How's your cornhole game? <laughs> I can play a little bit. I mean, I'm not going to play too much tomorrow. I might get out there and mess around. I know my kids are playing on the team and some mm -hmm. other people that are coming out. But um, I'll be out there for a little bit. A couple of my other teammates may stop by just to say hello. But obviously, a day before a game, it's really hard for us to be out there. Yeah, yeah you can't the entire tournament. You can right. kill yourself playing cornhole. Yeah, you can. You got you to get off your feet. You got to get off your feet. You know, have go you, sit down. Have you seen these professional leagues that are out there now, yeah, like have, on yeah, ESPN yeah, 9 right, and really? 10? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, they trash serious. talk during right. the uh, – like, they're, like, pointing at each – I'm like – Guys, this is cornhole. Like, where, yeah. what are we doing here? They, they, they are yeah. dead serious. They got sponsors. You can talk trash shirts. in anything that's competitive. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Don't if you, you have to have a beer in your left hand when you play cornhole? Well, that's, that's a, I thought that's something different. That's the one you throw, like, the Frisbee at the oh, pole. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. forgot what that's called. Yeah. Ultimate Frisbee? Or? No, what? no. It's, it's similar to Cam Jam, but it's, it's a different spinoff. It's like a, a pole you stick in the dirt, and you have a bop. Uh, I guess I don't think that's what my game is called, Polish horseshoes. But <laughs> I don't know it either. But uh, we okay, have a game similar to, to yeah, tell us yeah, You put know. a bottle on top of the the stick and you throw a frisbee and try to knock the bottle off. Okay. You get like three points and it's. <laughs> but I can't think of the name of the game. Sink cornhole, uh, sink cancer with cornhole. Tickets still available tomorrow. Just show up, 12:30 p.m. and yeah. the tournament starts at 1:30 uh, p.m. and yeah. uh, it supports ovarian cancer research coming up tomorrow. Yeah. It's a family thing, right? It's a family thing, you know. So bring the kids out, you know, the family and. And then you can do it online. You don't have to wait till tomorrow. But, you know, sinkcancer.eventbrite.com to sign up right now and uh, come and hang out. We do have some door prizes. Be giving out a Tremaine Edmonds jersey, a Josh Allen jersey, yeah. a Lorenzo Alexander jersey. I'll get them autographed for you. So that's a little extra benefit for signing up as well. All right, let's get to the lowdown. Your, your keys to a Buffalo victory Sunday against uh, the Miami Dolphins. What do you got? What's yeah, the and, and a lot of stuff we've kind of already really talked about is the essence of this week of not buying into the national narrative of – Facing an 0 5 team um, who's had kind of like a, a quarterback carousel, not quite sure what they want to do there, and just haven't, hasn't played well all season. And so, for, for a mindset, especially coming off a of bye week, you know, oh, well, we got an easy, easy win here. And, that, and that's when it comes up to bite you because you got to understand those guys in that locker room, even though they may be going through some turmoil right now with, you know, coaching and guys not being on that team and, and it seems like the team doesn't want to win, those guys in that locker room want to win. I've been on a team like that. They want to come out here and compete because at the end of the day, you're very prideful as an NFL player. And, and, and any team can win on any Sunday if you allow them the confidence um, in, the, in the hope that they maybe can win. So we have to come out and start fast. There was angry frustration coming out of the Dolphins after the loss yeah, of Bobby McCain. Bobby McCain. Went off. Losing I mean, you sucks. Could, yeah. it, I mean, it does. Yeah. I mean, especially when you're right there, and obviously in that situation, you're trying to go for the win, right. you know, two-point conversion, and point. just lost by one point. But you are competing to win, regardless of what people may think, you know. Um, everybody in that locker room, you want to get a win, and you want to get that nasty taste out of your mouth. And so for us, we don't want to be that team they, yeah. they, they break that streak or find their first win against. And so we have to go out there 
uh, with the mindset of let's jump on these boys early, um, get them out of the game, and 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 can and continue that until uh, the fourth quarter. Uh, Lorenzo's uh, lowdown number two. This is interesting. Get back into the process. Right. Yeah. You, come you say that like you, we all understand what the yeah, process is. The, the process is really just a, 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 another way of saying your routine. Okay. Um, coming off of a bye week, uh, sometimes there's a little bit of. Um, lag like you take a vacation you know you come in on monday uh just you kind of ease your way into it and so some of these have have had already taken place and i think that's why it was so great that sean addressed it on monday so guys weren't kind of easing their way back into the week now we're back at work it's time to focus back in let's you know get the information from ourselves scout correct these issues that we've had you know whether it's been turnovers um you know um third third um pumps blocked on special teams uh the way we've played the screen Let's make sure that we self-scout ourselves and get back and fix that on Monday, and then let's jump on these uh, Miami Dolphins and see what they do well. Let's see where we can attack them. And, and whether you lift weights, uh, wherever your recovery process looks like, how you watch film, get right back into that routine so now your body knows, okay, when Sunday comes, it's time to go, and you're hitting back on fire, and you don't have, like, this lull in the first quarter. Like, man, why are these guys playing so sloppy? Yeah. Can't have that. No, not at all. And number three is get off to a fast start. Yeah, and 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 that's all about. Um, we don't want them to get any momentum at all coming into our house. Obviously, we know Bills Mafia is going to show up. So using that energy, and really right off the bat, whether it's the offense or defense who's starting the 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 game, really the special teams gonna start. Let's start hit them in the mouth early and play good sound football and finish them off, and don't allow them to get any hope to where they think they can maybe squeak out a win. Um, we were look, we were talking about uh, snap counts before you came on the air. You, you're basically through five games playing about 50% of the defensive snaps and yeah. virtually all of the special team snaps Right at age 36. I'm good. Are you sure? I'm built for it. That's, <laughs> you, the, that's, for that's it? the way I condition myself. We got to get out it's of this all mindset about the that, that 36 is old. That's just a mindset. You know, I've been doing this for a long time, and I feel good, and, and my body understands how to get through things. So I'll be fine. 11 games left. You keep yeah. up this pace for 11 games? Uh, always. You wouldn't ask a 21-year-old that, would you? No, I would not. I know. I mean, so I, why are we asking me this? I mean, I think it's some you know ageism I mean. going on. I don't know. Why, I mean, why are, you, why are you asking me? I am the biggest victim of ageism. Why, why, building, why are you, you asking I mean? me this? Because Chris put out a report that I was tired after the game. Oh, no. I, after I, 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 after I laid it on the line I, in the humidity. That's what I said. <laughs> yeah, I said the I reason tired. he was gassed now was because he was filling sense. in for Matt and yeah, laying everything on special teams. Hey, you got to lay it all out there. They talk about it. I actually do it. You know, I lay it all out there. I'm not leaving nothing back. So I walk in the line. Room. He's sitting on the chair and he's got his legs like straight out, yeah. probably so he doesn't cramp up or something because he's so low on fluids. Yeah, and he's like, "Man, I'm tired." <laughs> Don't say. And I'm like, right. "I know." And, well, he was right. <laughs> well, no, he, no, but I think everybody knows why. I mean, he's playing three of the four units on special teams, so he's basically running gassers during a game while playing defense. So. Come on now. It's hard like, to do. It's all, it's all relative. I mean, right. he's tired for a reason. <laughs> nothing to do with age. N has nothing to do with age. All right. Lorenzo, have fun at that uh, cornhole tournament tomorrow. Thanks for joining us today. We appreciate it. Well, I appreciate you. The Lowdown with Lorenzo Alexander. He'll be with us again next Friday. Chris and I coming back with more with some special guests when we return. Come on back. One Bills Live presented by Colada Health. Coming to you from the uh, Seneca Studios in Orchard Park. This is Buffalo Bills Radio.